journey. You know, as I always say, the journey of life is the journey of living out our mission. Living out the way we are sharing in the mission of Christ. And it is the Holy Spirit now who accompanies us also as promised by the Lord. And therefore, this is now again Emmanuel, God with us, in now in the Spirit. Siguro, mahalaga rin na maunawaan natin yun na sabi nga lagi rin natin pinagninilayan, di ba, na ang, ang ating panahon ngayon, ang panahon ng simbahan, ay ang panahon ng Espiritu Santo. At yung Espiritu Santo na yan ay ang sumasabay sa atin, no? sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. Ay, lalong-lalo na sa pagsasabuhay natin ng misyon na binigay sa atin ng Diyos, na laging pakikibahagi sa misyon ng Panginoon. Kaya ito ngayon ay ito ngayon ang kumbaga ay panibagong ano, no? kabanata ng Diyos na nananahan sa atin. Sa pag- ito ngayon ay ang Espiritu, ang Espiritu ng Panginoon ng muling na buhay. It is the presence of God, the Spirit of the risen Lord, God with us. And then the third and final point is, you know, when you when you reflect on this and put it all together, you know, as the Lord promised, you no, know, He said that whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love Him and reveal myself to Him. So here you realize now the, the dwelling of the Father, the Son, of the Spirit in us. It's almost like it is now the, the fullness no, of the presence of the Trinity in our lives. And again, I invite you to reflect on that. You know, um, Again, uh, as a final, as a final uh, point for reflection, no? you know, w- one of the things that that is not very well known, uh, no, to to to, to many, uh, Ignatius of Loyola had a very tremendous devotion to the Trinity, no? and in fact, uh, one of his great uh, one of his great uh, visions was uh, the vision at La Storta. It was the Father accepting Ignatius, no, and to be placed with the Son. But there he saw the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, accept, accepting him and bringing him into Christ's mission. And perhaps today we can also reflect on that, our devotion to the Holy Trinity, the fullness of God's presence in our life. God with us in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ang pananahan ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu sa atin. Sa atin. So let us pray for this grace this coming week no, as we continue to reflect on this, on this presence of the Spirit and the movement of the Spirit that makes present in our lives the love Father, Son, and Spirit. And together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. 
My dear brothers and sisters, let us now approach the gracious throne of our loving Father and present to him our needs as well as those of the church and of the people of God. Let us pray to him, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, may the Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and lay leaders, be compassionate shepherds and defenders of God's people. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, may those who carry out the task of leadership and service in society and in government be aware of Jesus' commandment of love and apply it faithfully in their life and service. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, may Christians whose faith is weak and whose hope is tested find strength in the Holy Spirit, who is our consoler and defender. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us remember all the intentions commended to our prayers at this Mass. For all this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. my dear brothers and sisters that this our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church may our prayers rise up to you O Lord together with the sacrificial offerings so that purified by it by purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to accept at mapagmahal na pagtugon. Dahil makikita natin na may bahagi ng kanyang pagkataon na sinabi, baka hindi ko kaya no, yung darating niyang krus at bukong pasakit. Pero sa katapusan, anong sabi niya? Hindi ang kung gusto ko, kundi ang gusto mo, Ama. Yun yung mapagmahal na pagtalima. Yung kalayaan na binigay ng Panginoon para ialay ang kanyang sarili. And I think that transforms everything. No? As we always, as we have been saying these last few weeks, that loving obedience is a transformative grace. And here the Lord again repeats that love me, you will be obedient to my commandment. And that is the commandment of love. Yung pangalawang punto ay yung pangako niya no, magpadala ng Espiritu Santo. And in the Gospel, the Lord talks about, and I think it is only uh, the Gospel of John that uses the advocate describe the Spirit. And, and, and in the text, the original, it is parakletos. And, and it is, uh, uh, ang kahulugan nun ay isang kasama, no, companion, katabi, no, katabi na, na sinasabayan tayo. 
And yun yung pangako ng Panginoon, I will send you the paraclete. And the paraclete is the advocate, the one who accompanies us. And here I think, what I invite you to reflect on is that this promise of the paraclete, the advocate, is because he said, if you love me. So it is really a response on our part in the same way that the loving obedience of our Lord was a response to His Father. It was a response in love to His Father. That's why it was loving obedience. And it was not simply obedience, but it's loving obedience. And I think it's very important for us to realize that, that, that our obedience to God's will is not a matter of compliance. It is a matter of devotion and deep love. And there is the freedom, again, that the Lord gives us to respond. And I think this is a very powerful reminder to us that our response is always in freedom because it is a response in love. And love never, never is a burden for us. But it is, it is a, a, a commitment, a devotion that gives us greater freedom because we make the choice to devote and dedicate ourselves. Siguro yung unang punto niya, no, na makita natin na ang ang help to you for our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up 